everybody. My name is Brady Dale, and uh, I'm here with David Floyd, and together we're presenting Shuhaku. What did they say? It's a project we've been working on uh, to give people a new way to explore the internet. Um, the way we're describing Shuhaku right now is the open internet is the territory. This is a map, and it makes shortcuts. Uh, and those shortcuts come from working together with folks who are interested in the same things you are. Um, we like to say that this is um, just social enough. So uh, a thing I think we can all agree on is social media is bad. We're not happy with it. Um, we wish that we had a different experience of the internet. Maybe some of you have been around long enough to remember when the internet was fun and cool and weird, but someone came along and made it a little bit less than ideal. And yet, there is a thing at the core of social media that we all like. There are some things that are, are helpful. And so is there a way we can tone a lot of it down, but get back to the roots of just finding cool stuff? Um, so, you know, the argument from authority is always bad, but it's always worthwhile to make it. So let's start with Paul Ford. Um, Paul is an amazing commentator in all things technological, especially what has to do with writing. Um, and he posted this tweet a little while back saying that, uh, Web nerds were like, you know what, blogs are great, comments are bad, and that led Silicon Valley to be be like, awesome, let's let's destroy blogs and leave the comment section. Um, a little bit more seriously, uh, Jaron Lanier, a famous guy in the artificial intelligence world, um, sort of pointed out that social media uh, treats people like crowds, and so they behave like mobs. And lastly, um, Shoshana Zuboff, who just wrote a great new book about surveillance capitalism, uh, just pointed out how uh, we've let not just ourselves become uh, the product, but really entire societies, and that is less than wonderful. So, uh, that said, the internet is fun and great, and we all like it, uh, and there's a lot of cool stuff out there, and there is a a dead and dying technology out there um, called Real Simple sim Simplication, sin Syndication, or RSS, that is good and open source. Um, and it was the core of this thing that uh, one of the web giants made, Google Reader, uh, that I know, I, I'm a reporter in the world, and I know a fellow reporter who actually cried the day that the Google Reader uh, was shut down. Um, people say they miss it, but we argue that they wouldn't use it if it came back because the model needs a refresh. Um, so the problem is uh, what Google Reader was based on, uh, RSS, websites are starting to deprecate, deprecate it or at least make it harder to find. Um, and so now, but subscribing to sites is coming back. It's it's, it's very hot again. Uh, and you know the primary mode that people know about this is through Substack. So they're subscribing via email, which we sort of contend is is not super elegant. I mean, if you like it, that's cool. Um, but we think there's you know there's there's a mix of ideas that could be good. Um, and self-publishing is coming back. Like owning your own website, owning your own piece of the internet um, is becoming something people want to do again. They just want—they don't want to turn over their entire identity to things like Twitter and Instagram and Facebook. Um, so how can we capitalize on that trend and and bring back the fun, joyous spirit and the creative spirit that we all liked um, without going directly to what feed readers were? Uh, because again, we think those are donezo. So um, what are the the big problems with the discussion about the internet right now is it's all about what people are doing and we think that that is less than wonderful because the truth is most people on the internet aren't really doing things exactly they're enjoying it uh, they're lurking and we think lurkers are great and on a lot of level there's what powers the web and keeps it running and so we want to build something for lurkers uh, that makes your lurking better and more efficient and you find better things to lurk through so uh, this is a term that we are toying with right now. I don't know how sold David is on it. I don't know how sold I am on it, but it's a way of thinking about what we've built. Um, we're calling it, well, I'm calling it collaborative binoculars right now. And that's just the idea that binoculars are these things uh, that help you see what you're looking for in a crowded area, but, but binoculars in the real world are something that folks just use on their own, whereas binoculars on the internet could be something we use collaboratively. So you can do things together and uh, and still have binoculars. So that's kind of cool. What does that actually mean though? Well, David was gonna get substantive on that. And by the way, um, I just wanna say, I think we're gonna end this with plenty of time for questions. So if, if folks get curious or excited or think this is crazy in some way, uh, please start writing those questions or, or sending them in now because I, I think we'll have time for them and we're happy to answer them. But in terms of what collaborative, the sort of theoretical basis of it, um, the, the, one of the things that's good about social media and an advantage that social media had is it provided unitary attention. So 
you just have to go to one place and the things that you like will just appear there, right? And that's convenient. I, you know, I, I like a ton of websites, but it's hard for me to remember all of them to go visit them as often as I would like. Um, but the problem with that is it drove people away from the original sources. So what we've built, while it provides unitary attention, actually does also encourage people to click over to things and take a look at them in their native location. We actually think that's good because the web has gotten so advanced and complicated that really you probably just should go to the website to see good content. Like that is the reality right now because websites have gotten pretty amazing. Um, so uh, like we said, this is just social enough. This works out the way we're envisioning it, which it probably won't because nothing ever does. But um, you know, that's the idea is we want to orient it towards small groups. So we want small groups of people to be able to find each other on there and be able to help each other find the things that are the best within a given interest area. Um, so not the masses, in other words. Another thing we're doing is a, a big break that we're taking from anything that's at all social is we're obfuscating followings. So, you know, you can probably figure out who follows you. Um, you know, it's not impossible, but it's not going to be a score on the front of your page. It's not going to be a, a thing that's gamified. Uh, that's not really the point. So um, we're, we're, um, we're taking that away. And we're also another big move that we're making that's really different is uh, what we're building is leading with ephemerality. So um, it, when in doubt, we throw it out, basically. So uh, people will obviously generate data on our site, but that data won't last for very long. Um, generally speaking, things won't be on there for more than 77 hours. I'm happy to talk to you about why that's the reason, but uh, the amount of time. But uh, the point is, people will do things on the site. Uh, they will live for a while, and then they will go away, um, with the idea being that the internet should work a little bit more uh, like conversation the real world does. Obviously not exactly the same, it's not the real world, but more like it. Uh, and also we're gonna hide editorialization. So people will do things on the site, they will share things, um, but that won't be the, but it'll lead with the content itself and not what folks think about it. So um, also uh, this isn't really true right now, but it is a, an area that we're headed to. Um, if you wanna check this out, you, we're gonna show you where it is and you can go check it out right now. Uh, but eventually, once it, we sort of get to that point, we're going to we intend to limit comments to mutuals um, and maybe even end to end encrypt them someday so that uh, really it is just a conversation between people who know each other and, and want to be talking. So uh, this is all about the Internet for uh, people who want to self publish, who want to engage with small groups. Um, and uh, what better time to do it than 2020 when everyone is just entirely online anyway? Um, so also, uh, emoji. So this is a thing that I, that I'm personally really psyched about it, about the site. Um, and, uh, and so one of the, if this all sounds like very serious and theoretical, there's also a fun side of it too. Um, emoji are critical to what we're building. And we actually think that there's been untapped potential in emoji since forever. And we're going to help the internet figure out what more emoji can do. And the simplest way to explain what we're doing with emoji is just, um, it's kind of trying to use emoji to replace tags. And so anytime somebody sh decides to share out something that they like on this thing that we built and that David will soon show you and make it less abstract, um, they have to put an emoji with it, not a broad comment about a big thought about it, just an emoji. And we think some of these emoji will start to take on meanings of their own uh, within certain groups that you know aren't immediately obvious to what the emoji is right now. And we're excited about seeing that come together. And we actually think there's some ways that we can use that to help a, a broad array of internet users, not just not just our users, um, start to find what's coolest online and use the internet better. So um, yeah, emoji are important. So how's it work? All right, so there's basically, um, yeah. So there's basically four parts uh, to using uh, what we've built. And the first part of it is, you know, following a thing that you like. So starting with that right now, we're building that off of, like I said, the, the dead and dying standard that is RSS, uh, which David, is the, as the guy who's doing all the coding on this, is learning is gigantically buggy. Um, you know, if this develops and goes the way we hope, uh, we may actually manage to do some innovation there, who knows, and be able to use some things besides RSS. Um, or maybe just RSS will get better and come back in a big way and stop being as buggy. So the second thing is aligning. Um, so, so you're able to do this collaborative binoculars thing on there if there's people who you are aligned with on there. So we're hoping that that's small businesses. We're hoping that's groups of friends. Uh, we're hoping that that's little clubs of people who have a shared interest. But we want to build a thing 
that folks can join as a group and use to find the information that they're looking for online a little more efficiently and without quite as much drama as exists right now. And then this is where it really starts to get powerful, we think. Um, if I'm from, I cover the cryptocurrency world, so there's this idea in cryptocurrency called quadratic voting. Um, we're just calling it bumping within the project, but um, it's kind of quadratic voting for dummies. So quadratic voting is this complicated way of sort of deciding on uh, deciding on how to, like what the most important thing when you're deciding, you know, you're voting on something is. Um, we're, it's complex and involved. We're, we're just doing the simplified version. The point is within our site, uh, you get you get to do 11 actions a day. Um, there's 11 things you can do. You can share 11 things or you can just promote 11 things. And you can also, um, you could say one thing was so great, you could, you could bump it 11 times uh, if that's what you wanted to do. The point is to p let people express um, the, the intensity of their fervor and, um, but also to limit it um, so that people can uh, be more judicious about, about what they promote. We think that's gonna end up being powerful. So uh, that's bump. And then the last thing is, like we said, we lead with ephemerality. So you can know that whatever you do on the site, um, will disappear before long, uh, which is good because we all have things we regret doing on the internet and you won't have to regret them on the thing we're building. So uh, critically, uh, the site is all about the text online right now. We have no intention of ever pivoting to video. Um, we think internet will always be about reading and that is what we are trying to build for. Um, so one last thing that sort of the big reveal of this talk is um, when uh, we started this project and we put this application in, we put in Shuhaku as kind of our working name. Uh, David is a language guy and uh, he came up with Shuhaku. It's um, Levantine Arabic for what did they say, which is a, a good organizing way of thinking about what we're doing. But as we kept working, we sort of kicking around more names. And uh, now our name is Elevenist. Um, so uh, we're pretty excited about Elevenist as a name. Like you said, you have 11 votes. 11 is the first number to like get past that first order of magnitude once the numbers get to 10. Uh, so we think it's some powerful symbolism there. Uh, so yeah, now it's time to show you what it is that we've built. So hopefully you guys are excited about that. Yeah, and if you wanna check it out, go visit 11 But uh, right now, David will show it to you. Henry, turn it over to David. Hey folks, am I, am I audible? Uh, let me see. Yeah. I need to steal presenting from, oh, it looks like I am the presenter. Okay, I'm gonna try to share my screen. I'm gonna allow it. I'm gonna enter this weird recursive mirror world. Of, okay, let's leave that. All right. Um, are you guys seeing what I hope you're seeing? A uh, thing with Elevenist in the upper left-hand corner? Yes? Great. Okay, cool. Yeah, so this is it. Um, and here we go. Um, first of all, just thank you. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Uh, thank you for letting us be here. Um, I would love to thank more people, because I really want to stall for a minute here, because um, about to do a live demo with some extremely immature software, but um, yeah, this is, uh, you're looking at it, this is our quarantine project um, slash world changing company Elevenist, and this is the sort of first screen you enter when you log in. Uh, we call it the mine feed, so it's, it's your feed, and this is basically where you can treat the site as a straightforward RSS reader. You know, if all you want to do is subscribe to RSS or Adam, we support Adam, feeds and uh, just see what content is coming from your favorite blogs and publications, that's great. You can just you can just do that. So here I subscribe to a to a large number of uh, blogs and publications, and here they all are, just every item on all of their feeds in straight reverse chronological order. Um, and as Brady mentioned, you know, if I want to go look at something, um, there I go, XKCD. Everyone loves XKCD. Funny stuff. Pulse versus the street. Great. Um, yeah, but as Brady mentioned, you know, this takes us to the actual publisher's site. Um, we are not rendering their stuff in some little box, you know, stealing their traffic. That is, that is not what we're about here. So, okay, here's a really great cartoon. I love it. 
I want to share it. So, as Barry mentioned, we love emoji, and when you share something, this is what you do. This is a mandatory step. Um, and let's see, polls, so like there's some little voting box here. Right? That's great, okay. And again, as Bray mentioned, I can, uh, I can both share something and bump it up a few more times. I get a total of 11, I've already spent a few today, yeah, and I'm out, that's all I get. Um, but, you know, if I regret myself, I can, uh, I can reverse course here. Uh, this is normally much faster. <laughs> I swear, yeah, there we go. So I can take a, you know, I can take a bump back there. Um, also, you know, just uh, just a little bit of basic functionality stuff. You know, if I don't actually want to see everything, I can just look at uh, because the internet. Um, I don't actually really know what that is. Uh, an Aeon, you know. And um, also have comments here. Let's see, comments anywhere? No, well, I watched this, it was great. Virgin Islands are cool. Um, please make more valuable contributions to our wonderful community should you choose, <laughs> choose to uh, join it than I just did. Uh, but I, you know, we're not Twitter. We have a we have an edit button. I can I can make a more valuable contribution right there. Uh, so this demo so far has perhaps um, brought up some questions or potential criticisms. Uh, for example. Where do I subscribe to any of these things? Well, I literally just plug a URL into this little there. So I, I, if I want to subscribe to Harper's, there I go. Hopefully it worked. It appears to have, there's Harper's, cool. Um, that's not incredibly intuitive or easy or, you know, frictionless or all these internet words we love. Um, and also, these social features are pretty nice and cool, but what are they for? Am I just shouting into the void of my own personal RSS feed? And the answer is no. Let's go visit the select feed where I still have this notification, live demo, got some really cool bugs. But here is where I can discover things. Um, you know, earlier I shared a story, attached an emoji to it. The people who follow me are going to see that, and here is where I go to see the people who I follow and what they are sharing and attaching emojis to. So I've got, um, oh, it's a little heavy, uh, Lee Wen Leong's obituary. Uh, he's the first doctor to report the existence of coronavirus, so there we go. Um, let's head on into it instead. We hate into it. So here's some comments. Into it is the worst. The smart comment me. Um, Brady, I totally agree. Airhouse, like yeah, just money bag. Um, I would just like to reiterate that money bag, or or something. I don't know, some kind of evil jack o' lantern uh, to emphasize how bad into it is, and. You'll notice here that I see, you know, what people shared this article. And by definition, somebody here is going to be someone I follow because that's what puts it on my select feed. But I can also discover new people here because not everyone is going to be someone I already follow. So actual user, I swear they're real. And they are again, authentic user. Here's Brady. Here's Muriel. I'm looking for someone in particular, and it's not going so well. <laughs> okay, um, that's fine. We'll we'll find them, and I can also subscribe to publications in here. So if I if I like this Verge post, I just took a look at. I can subscribe to the Verge, and it'll be over here on my mine feed. There it is. Hey, it worked. That never happens. Okay, so that's all great. Um, but you know, where do I even start here? Um, you know, I can also just, by the way, let's go visit Brady. I can look at people's, you know, profiles here, and I can subscribe to publications that they follow um, from here, or unsubscribe, or follow them, or unfollow them, as the case might be. But, you know, my select fee is going to be empty if I just, like, jump on here, just like sign up for the first time. Like I don't follow anyone, so none of my followers are sharing stuff. So I have this users tab, and this is really where you start. Um, we'll just, 
you know, suggest some rando friends for you here. And also if you, um, as Brady mentioned, we sort of encourage you to follow people who you kind of like know in the real world, not saying you can't make new friends here or whatever, but, um, you know, if you happen to know their email or, you know, the handles they tend to use on the internet, like, you know, here's me. I didn't manage to snag this on Twitter or whatever, but yeah, this is where you can go ahead and uh, I can't actually follow myself, so that button really shouldn't be there. Um, and I think covered just about everything important, but just a final note, um, as Brady mentioned, these shares, you know, like um, all of this, you know, this story shared with this emoji by these people, each of those shares is going to disappear after 77 hours. Um, to be clear, if someone sort of reshares on top of your original share, that can like perpetuate, you know, its existence on different people's feeds or whatever. But um, your share, the thing that ties you to like that, you know, story or whatever, like that's going to disappear. And um, same with comments, uh, which yeah, here's some comments. Um, these are going to go away in in a matter of days, um, which you know just helps to simulate like a real conversation that you might have with your actual friends. People will remember it, sure, but it doesn't become some kind of you know weaponized Googleable thing to hold over your head when your opinion becomes unfashionable after a few years. And I think that is just about all I've got. I hope that I kept that within reasonable time and wasn't muted that whole time. And um, we're back to the weird hall of mirrors, so I'm going to stop sharing. Cool. So yeah, that's uh, that's what David and I are working on. Uh, we think it'll be healthy for the world. I don't know. Do we get any questions in DC or? Yeah, you have a few. So I'll just go oh, back cool. to the top. Um, and then in, in this moment, I encourage people to also add more questions because we have a few minutes um, for sure. Um, so uh, at the top, uh, just a question about why the 77 hours first and then two more below. Well, the easiest answer on that is we wanted a limited amount of time, uh, but enough time that a thing could live for a little bit. Um, so it was that and then um, so everything, this is going to be hopefully a running theme in the site, everything is 11 related. So uh, 11 hours was too little. Um, seven is a lucky number. Seven times 11 is a few days. That seemed like a right amount of time. So that's why 77. We plan to hit this theme really just too far. Seconds. What's that? Sorry, David. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm just saying we plan to hit the 11 theme just like really too hard. Like just overdo it, you know? I'm very into it. So, yeah. Uh, we actually started with 24 hours, but um, realized pretty quickly that that really sort of enforces a rule that it's like, you have to be here every day, which doesn't seem healthy. So, yeah. <laughs> um, Anna has a question, um, I think, referring to a comment about for people who want to self-publish. And so the question was, this sounds self-hostable then? So I guess are the plans for 11 is to be self-hostable. Oh, no, it's a... Uh... No, we don't plan that now. I guess it could happen eventually. But no, th this is a, you know, uh, a, a monstrously centralized behemoth uh, for, for now. <laughs> yeah, guilty. Um, it's an interesting idea. Uh, but yeah, for, for, the, for the time being, we, we don't have any plans to make that happen. You can self-host your blog and publish an RSS feed and uh, be super popular on Elevenist. Another question, Sam asks, can I subscribe to or filter by emojis or see the aggregate emoji tags? Okay, so wait, let me jump on this one first, David. This is the thing I'm most excited about. So um, hopefully, yes. And like, uh, and what I really hope, I mean, my, my dream for emojis, I get so psyched talking about emojis, but like, I really do hope they start to take on some real meanings within the community. And um, as it grows, we'd like to have a front page that's kind of like, curated by emoji um so you know like it would be like strawberry and like angry face and like whatever and just like whatever the hottest emojis are on the site and the stories that are really popping into those emojis that's what i said when i that's what i meant when i was saying we think there's a way in which elevenist can end up being a service for the whole internet it could be a different kind of front page and 
yeah, if this emoji thing works out, you you better believe I am psyched to bring more functionality to emoji uh, like that. So um, it's not there now because we just we've got like six users. And it just My really fault. It's not there. <laughs> I just have to build these things. <laughs> but like, but no, I that is definitely a thing we've thought about, and I'm super jazzed about it. Awesome. Uh, I think your enthusiasm <laughs> was coming through there. Uh, I, I sort of I think there's a, a comment slash question, and if you aren't um, in the chat, I think there's a some conversation here after that you might want to join into. Um, okay. So this one from um, Jax M. This seems like a really awesome and healthy way to navigate the internet, and I like it a lot. I guess my only question is, what's next? I mean. Well, I mean, it's live now, uh, so folks can use it. Um, you know, David and I are constantly having conversations about what to build next. That's largely on, so if it's not clear, like David's really the technical brains behind it. Um, I just raised complicated questions that stress him out. Um, you know, uh, we need to start sort of telling, pe telling the world about it some more and getting some users. Um, we obviously need better design, so um, we're gonna try to get a designer involved at some point um but um yeah it's all just starting i mean we're open for people's thoughts also dc where do i is the public chat i guess I, I don't really know where the chat is um it's on the party attendee uh site I'll, I, after this uh, conversation i can make sure to point you both to it if you haven't already gotten on oh i've been okay okay but it's not within this window that we're in right now okay cool yeah no. um and so i think maybe a last uh, question slash thread, which came back from the, the earlier self-hostable one, um, is, uh, you know, a suggestion that, like, looking at better rating with ActivityPub, and then the question about uh, if it's open source or plans to open source it. Those are all tech things, David. Uh, I'm sorry, I had, uh, there, there was a little bit of robot voice at the end there. <laughs> so federation and or, and open sourcing. Yeah, I mean, we are not, we don't have any immediate plans to open source the code for this. Um, I think I, and Brady mentioned this, but I feel like our, I see our sort of role, if this takes on any traction at all, in like helping the open web be open and cool and federated, if I'm not misusing the term is really encouraging RSS to sort of be a thing again. I mean, it's still it's it's still all over the place, but it's like, I mean, when I talk to people in my sort of like in the late 20s demographic, I mean, oftentimes they don't really even know what it is. Like they might've heard the term or whatever. Uh, they might be vaguely aware that it, you know, somehow underlies their like podcast feeds that they subscribe to or something. But, um, and, I, and I have found that like, just generally the standard seems to be sort of decaying um, in terms of like people not uh, doing it right and people like breaking their RSS feeds and like seeming to not notice, you know, like they put in some evil Unicode escape character that like, you know, <laughs> like breaks every XML parser and like, and the fact that that sort of remains in there makes me think that, um, you know, they don't notice because uh, because it doesn't seem really essential, you know, or, you know, they're looking at some, like, CNN, you know, feeds and stuff, and, like, I feel like I'm rambling here, but I just see things that haven't been updated since 2012, you know, from, like, very major publications, and, um, yeah, I just sort of, um, sort of a, a whatever little nudge we can give to make this a thing again would be would be cool. Yeah. Yeah, and like I think it does. It does. I mean, I don't, I'm interested in people's feedback on it. You know, uh, we didn't really talk about business plan for it. You know, our monetization plan is ultimately to ask people to pay some money to be a part of it. But I mean, we're talking tiny amounts of money, um, like so much less than all paid to use websites are charging. Um, so you know, we we sort of need that to keep developing it. Um, but we think it's it's going to be <laughs> like crazy reasonable. Um, but we do think for it all to work best, folks do kind of need to be in like one thing that's all there but i don't know maybe we're wrong maybe we'll i mean we're open-minded um uh so some sort of federation thing could happen at some point um yeah. 
I mean, I would love to have the technical chops to turn this into like some sort of Mastodon self-hosted thing. That would do that. <laughs> Love to be that smart. <laughs> yeah, David, David is new to this world too, and I don't know anything, so there's there's also that. But um, yeah. Uh, okay, great. I don't see any more questions, but I do see a lively discussion on that point in the chat. So maybe okay. if you have time after, there'll be people there who are totally. probably excited to pick that up. Um, and uh, if people could uh, share their emoji or ASCII. Um, text or any any way of appreciation that I guess doesn't get to be applause because we're not all in the same room. And just a big thank you, Brady and David, for that wonderful presentation. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Really thanks appreciate it.